Jordan, you guys had a great win at Donington. The Salim battle didn't come because they went off, but you had the measure of them? I think we did there, yeah. Um, you know, we'd worked hard on our setup. Car's always been good at Donington. Lawrence has always had a good lister at Donington. And uh, when I went past McKellar as he came out of the pits, I thought, well, this would be interesting. So I really got my head down for a couple of laps. And I felt that I was taking probably half a second away from him. And you, just looking at the body language of the car in the mirror, I was, I was confident that we were going we to have enough for them there. At Silverstone, is it going to be a completely different setup? And, and will you not have the same kind of pace? I think we will have. On the test day uh, a couple of weeks ago, we were very good. The car's pretty well as we, as we were going to bring it here. So now I think the car's going to be very good around here. David Jones, great win for you guys at Donington. You look like you had the car really, really well dialed in. At Silverstone, it, it's going to suit maybe some of your competitors a little bit better. Well, the Ferraris will be quick round here. Um, they carry the speed through the fast corners extremely well. Uh, remember one Ferrari started from the back of the grid last time. Um, but saying that, the, you know, the, the Porsches will be there. Jamie Davis, the Velux Ferrari has been really quick in the first couple of races. You haven't had the luck maybe you deserve. But first of all, tell us about this new car you've got at Silverstone. Well, to start off, it's white, uh, so it's a totally different colour than the other car, obviously. Um, but it's just basically a, a new chassis, um, similar spec to, uh, to the last one, but it's just new, basically, so everything's nice and crisp. We were talking to David Jones earlier, and he reckons the Ferrari is going to be the car to follow. Is that true? I'd say that the Ferrari suits this type of circuit, for sure, but uh, the problem is that we're, we are still learning it is a new car. So we're, we're playing a little bit of catch-up in that area, but uh, we're getting closer every race, so I would hope to think that we could be uh, somewhere near the front. In the race for the GT Honours, Jordan and Warnock head the field on 42 points, from the Celine and the Speed 12. In the GTOs, Martin Short and Simon Pullen's TVR still leads the way from the Porsche and Ferrari. Let's join Rob for the rolling start. Yeah, thank you very much, Darren, as we see the cars warming up their tires at the start of this race. And we've got the pole position, Celine, in the pit lane. Some kind of problem here, Will Hoy. That looks like the uh, fuel tank there and the pump, so uh, clearly they've got some sort of fuel leak. And uh, I guess the officials have moved the car off the grid, which uh, you have to do in these circumstances. If they can fix it, that would be great. They're obviously mopping up the fuel which is in the cockpit, and that's the last, the last thing the driver wants to see, fuel sploshing around in the cockpit. He'll certainly have a lot of smell there uh, during the race. Well, he is going to start, but right from the back of the grid. We had a fuel leak, uh, one of the pumps, and uh, there's lots of fuel inside the car, so obviously, I mean, quite rightly, the, uh, the officials had to pull the car off the grid. We've uh, fixed the union now, and uh, we hope it's going to be okay, but that means we're starting from the pit lane, so not a very good start. Yeah, not a very good start at all for the Celine, so they're not in that pole position. That means that on the front now, the Lister is unchallenged by its biggest challenger, the Celine. That's going to give them a slightly easier start to this race as we look all the way down the order. The Lister is now leading. Tucked in behind it is the fantastic TVR Speed 12. Look at that GTO performance on the outside there. That is Steve O'Rourke starting in the Porsche. Well, of course, a traditional rolling start, and the Lister absolutely launches off the front row. The Speed 12 is being lost already as we hit this long run down into Cop's Corner. It's going to be very, very easy for Dave Warnock, and we look at the GTO battle. Great move there by Shane Lynch, who goes into the lead of GTO in the number 69 Eclipse car. Martin Short, and this the 77 Porsche of the Jones brothers, it has been gone off on the outside. I think maybe there was contact with another car. It looks like, yes, there was. Well, oh, we've got some contact straight away here between the Ferrari and Porsche, it looks like. A challenge here from the Speed 12 also, so great action right in the first few corners here. Interesting there, the Porsche spinning off on the outside of Cops on the new Formula One surface. They've taken away the old gravel traps and replaced it with this high grip tarmac. And uh, of course, what it means is that cars can recover now and get back on the track rather than just sitting in the gravel. Yeah, well, absolutely. Uh, that Porsche was able to get back in competition. We saw the Ferrari going through, and the Speed 12 has gone into the lead here. Great drive at the start here by Rob Barf, who's taken that TVR Speed 12 into the lead of round three here of the British GT Championship. Now, Rob has just been settling into that team. He's got a very experienced teammate in Michael Kane, but Rob has been very, very quick, and he really enjoys driving that Speed 12 car. So much faster than the GTO car he drove last year. As we get a look at the restart here, we are going on board here with David Jones, who's starting in that Porsche, and here he is, just tucked in behind Martin Short, yet, and he definitely gets a hit there, Will Hoy. Yeah, clearly, it looked like, actually, he left a bit of room, and uh, Lockie did have enough room to come on the inside. You can climb that kerb on the inside, and uh, for whatever reason, he, he tapped the back of the Porsche, and around it went. 
Sure did, and that's worked to the advantage of these two cars right here. This is Shane Lynch, who is leading now in GTO. Tucked right in behind him is Simon Pullen, who's starting in that car. Now, they are leading the championship right now, and Shane Lynch here is very, very keen to get a, a victory and stay ahead of that championship leading car. Now, to me, Will Hoy, Shane Lynch has really, really come on very, very well indeed as a driver. Simon Pullen goes to take a look up the inside. Does he take the place? I think he does, I'm not too sure. Has he gone into the lead? Yes, he has. Shane Lynch is gonna be fighting back. Right in behind him is the GT Viper of Tony Littlejohn, who's gonna be doing this whole race on his own. Shane Lynch is now gonna be biding his time to perhaps have another go at Simon Pullen. A couple of young chargers here in these GTO cars. Simon Pullen, only 19 years old. Shane Lynch, of course, the ex-boy's own star, but Will, he's been doing a fantastic job this weekend. I think he's really developing nicely as a driver. Yeah, I mean, he's using his head, obviously he's learning every circuit he goes to, he's picking up experience from the more experienced drivers, and uh, that's the way to build your, your career. I mean, obviously he's had a very successful career in music, and funny enough, music and motorsport do does mix. There's an awful lot of people who, uh, from the music industry who do motor race. Steve O'Rourke, of course, manager of Pink Floyd is one, although he's been racing for many years longer than uh, Shane Lynch. Yeah, he sure has, and uh, yeah, it's funny you, you say that they do that, but it, it's uh, Steve O'Rourke is uh, doing, again, very, very good in the championship this year, partnered with Tom Sugden, and we look at him right there, and tucked in behind him is the number 66 Ferrari. Look at this, Will Hoy. This is the Selene already starting to move dramatically up the field. Ian McKellar is absolutely on a mission. Of course, he's going to fly by some of the GTO cars. He's got so much more power, so much more grunt, so much more performance, and he absolutely flies by the GTO Lotus, and he's coming up on now. Again, your friend Steve O'Rourke here, starting in the first stint in that Porsche GTO car, and he's gonna wanna let him get by, but not, of course, ruin his own race. And here we've got Tony Littlejohn just trying to get by. Now, that is not a battle of in the same class, but tricky move there, Will. Very difficult part of the track to put two racing cars around. Yeah, he went round the outside of the entry to Beckett's. That's certainly uh, a brave place to overtake, but he's obviously got a quicker car, but you've got to be pretty sure that the car in front of you, who's seen you, is not going to move over. Yeah, absolutely. Talk about quicker cars. Look at this, Celine, flying down the main straight here at Hangar Straight, tucking in behind the Viper of Tony Littlejohn. Now, just a quick word on Tony Littlejohn. He's planning to do this whole race on his own. To be fair, the Brooksby team have been struggling to get their finances together to do this championship, but so far they've managed to get out, and Tony Littlejohn can't even find a second driver at the moment, so he's having to do the whole race on his own. And uh, he's doing a pretty good job. That Viper needs a little bit more uh, track time, and they need, they're looking for sponsors. They've got some support from Matoni right now. Great to see the car out there. Little Tony little John on his own, but right now, all the action here is being provided by Ian McKellar Jr., who is flying up through the field in that Celine. As a matter of fact, he's coming up now on Simon Pullen in the GTO TBR Tuscan as we come down into Bridge Corner here. Very, very fast section of the track hard onto the brakes as they exit this hard, fast right-hander into the tight left-hander at Priory. Then they're again hard onto the brakes here, wrestling this very, very big, heavy GT car around the tight left-hander at Brooklands. He's going to want to get around this car as easily as he can. Simon Pullen knows he's not racing for position here. He wants to keep, of course, his pace going as much as possible. So he's going to just watch this Celine absolutely fly by now as they come to the quick sections of the track. I tell you what, this Grand Prix circuit, Will Hoy, is, is built for these kind of cars. The guys must love coming to the full Grand Prix circuit at Silverstone. Yeah, because it's got lots of fast corners. It's got cops, it's got that wonderful flowing bends of Beckett's, followed by Stowe. Got the tight sort of club oh, corner. Sorry to interrupt you there, Will. That's the 47 car Mike Newton. Just looks like it spun there coming through Brooklyn. Oh, and he's got the back end of that car stuck on the gravel. I don't know if he's going to get that going again, but it's in a dangerous position as we look at the Steve Warwick. Porsche, you were saying about this track, great for GT cars. They can really kind of you know, open the cars up around here, can they? Especially the Celine, of course, which has got a lot of high downforce effort, can use its speed, use that grip generated by the downforce through these fast corners. He's having a lot of fun out there, overtaking the slower cars, it makes him feel really good. Obviously, he's trying to get the car back up to the front of the field, and so far, he's making a very good job of it. Yeah, it, Ian McKellar really, really is on the charge. And another couple of drivers on a charge here. We're looking at Steve O'Rourke. Tucked in behind him is the Scott driver, Robert Ross. Wow, that was, uh, I think that was a little bit of an ambitious move there by Robert Ross Wilhoy. He tried it in the middle of Beckett's and uh, really a difficult place to overtake. And I think here we see the replay coming down. Just there isn't enough room. He hasn't got his car far enough alongside Steve O'Rourke. And uh, as a result, there's contact. And uh, again, we see that new Formula One surface there. No gravel trap, so Steve O'Rourke can recover. And battles ranging all the way down the field and right at the front here. This is the battle for the race overall. 
Rob Barf still leading in that TBR Speed 12, but you can see not by very much at all from Dave Warnock. So this is the, a great challenge between these two awesome GT cars here. Now again, we've been saying, oh, Rob Barf running just a little bit wide under a little bit of pressure. He absolutely didn't get that right, but now he seems to have gotten back delivering the power down on the road, and it comes out awesome power again from this Speed 12, but Dave Warnock is hunting him down. He's known as a driver, again, we've said this before, takes a little while to get going, but he tries to have a look up the insider, does he? No, thinks the better of it. Rob Barf goes around, Dave Warnock, middle of the corner, whoa! Will Hoy, what happened there? It's just right in the middle of that corner. It just seems to have lost the car. Well, I think uh, he was obviously concentrating very hard. He had a go into Luffield there and didn't get uh, past Balfe. Then had a look at down the inside of Cops and just got himself offline slightly. He took the corner a bit too tightly, and uh, as a result, he just got a little bit of oversteer there and probably kept his foot hard in. Here we see the replay. At this point here, he's already losing it in oversteer, trying to correct the car, and around it goes. Yeah, well, Rob Barf was pretty aggressive there, but I think it was a fair move, no question about that. I don't think the overtake was on, and then, it, like you say, Dave Warnock just seemed to lose his concentration. The other thing is, I think the Celine was hunting him down, so maybe one eye on his mirrors also. The Speed 12 leading this race, but not by much, tucked right in behind him is that Celine. Michael Kane is going to take over that car as we come up to pit stops. Join us after the break. <laughs> Uh, welcome back to round three of the British GT Championship. Rob Barf is about to hand that car over to his teammate Michael Kane, and he is having to work very, very hard indeed to stay in the lead of this motor race. And it's not going to be for long. Ian McKellar has been flying around from the back of the field, and he's moved into the lead before the pit stops. And he has really been, it's a fantastic drive from him, Will. Yes, of course, he started from the pit lane, and uh, he's had a very, very good drive, as you say. He's kept his nose clean. He hasn't got into any instant with the slower cars he's been overtaking. He's just kept his foot hard to the metal. Uh, obviously, it's a very quick car, but uh, that was a good overtaking move there is he, on Bath because uh, he made him defend the line and uh, got him coming out of Abbey. Yeah, and Rob Barth now is coming in to hand that Speed 12 over to Michael Kane. Now, again, they've got a job to do. The Celine is yet to make its pit stop. Now, that is, again, a big factor in GT racing this year. The, the TDR will generally be quicker on the pit stops than the Celine will. So they can get in and out of here as we look at uh, the Speed 12 stops. Rob Barth jumps out of the car. Michael Kane's going to go in. Of course, everyone is going to help him to get those seat belts done up. The crew chief, Kushti, here making sure that Michael Caine doesn't pull away too quickly and he tries to get the car away without stalling it. Well, on that, sometimes we see these guys struggling to get away. It's very, very difficult just to get away with these cars from a standing start, isn't it, when you make a pit stop? Well, A, you haven't been in the car, so you're sort of cold, as it were. You jump in the car. Also, you, sometimes the way the clutch wear, wears and the, the way the car is and the throttle response, um, you know, sometimes the car isn't what you're used to, and you just let the clutch out, and it will stall on you or fluff on you, and uh, that can be a problem, just getting into the car, as it were, on, on the pit stop. And here we see now the Celine coming into the pits here to make its driver change. As we saw a bunch of pit stops there, we saw the number 57 car of Tim Sugden going out in G GTO. Now, we always enjoy watching Tim Sugden drive that car when he gets in. He really does make that Porsche fly. Tommy Erdos here, you can see, holding his seat. He's a much smaller driver than Ian McKellar, and you watch them just yank Ian McKellar out of this car. Tommy Erdos will have to get his individual form-fitting seat into that so that he can drive the car. You can't drive a car with a seat that's too big for you, so big change in driver to look at the amount of time they sit here, Will. They're doing it as quickly as they can. They're looking pretty cool and calm. They know that they're running a good race, but it's just so, so much time ticking away on the clock here. Ian McKellar is helping with the seatbelts. They slam the doors down on the Celine. And again, he's got to pull away without stalling. Oh, it just looks like it's a little bit of a struggle. And uh, we should just stop and have a word with Graham Nastar. I'll be, be back in a minute, Graham. I'm just going to go and see if I can win this race, I think. But leading this race right now is Michael Kane in that speed 12. And look at that. That's not a bad gap at all, considering the Celine was ahead just before they went to pit stop. That has proven to be a big gap. And obviously I had to overtake quite a few cars. So I picked up quite a lot of rubbish on the tyres, so it's a bit of a problem to clean the tyres back up again. The car felt fine. Old Tommy did a good job in qualifying, getting the car sorted. It was his turn this weekend, so yeah, it was brilliant. Well, Ian McKellar did a great job. Tommy Erdos has got it all to do again to get in the lead of this race. It was interesting what McKellar was saying there about picking up rubber on the tyres. As you can see, the wide-angle shot there, bits of rubber. You pick these up when you run wide, overtaking slower cars, and you can upset the handling of the car. It takes a lap or two to get the grip back 100%. Bit of a shame about the start letting the TVR get away like that, waiting for my tyres to come in as usual. But uh, 
After that, car felt good, making time on the TVR. I saw the Celine coming up, thought we were in for a good fight. Got on the dirty side of the track and um, paid the price for it. So I lost a spunner coming out onto the um, last car. Unfortunately, I think I've left my teammate a bit too much to do today. Yeah, well, it sure is a lot of work for Mike Jordan to do, but he's, he's out there pushing very, very hard to try and get back, and pushing also very hard is the number 61 Marcos here as it goes past Matt Johnson in the Lotus, who we saw dicing earlier on with the Porsche. Pretty good run by the Ohana guys today. They haven't had too much luck so far, currently running pretty well. As we look at the 15 Porsche, just reversing up the pit lane there a little bit. But these guys again started on the back of the grid. Will Hoy at Donington, they had to start on the back of the grid. Today they've had to start on the back of the grid. Neil Cunningham coming out in that car. Always good value, Neil. And very, very good value. I tell you what, this, this car, Tommy Ernos, is right on a quick lap here, isn't he, Will? Yes, you can see from his body language, he's really pushing that car very hard. He's hungry for success. He's trying to make up that ground they've lost. And that's the man that he's trying to catch. Michael Caine there, chasing down the uh, Ferrari, and he's hit the Ferrari. Yeah, he sure has. Well, just right in the middle of that corner where we saw Dave Warnock going off earlier, bang. Obviously very, very keen to get by. And it's just a, really a misjudgment, Will. Yeah, I think it was a misjudgment because obviously that car, the TVR, carries a lot more speed than the Ferrari, and uh, he just seemed to misjudge it and just ran straight into the back of Jamie Davis and the Ferrari. And luckily, the Ferrari didn't spin. Yeah, you're right, it didn't. And uh, but he's going to be hunting down this driver pairing right now. Simon Pullen, the young driver, gets out. His team owner and co-driver, Martin Short, jumps in there. And uh, if you want to see a TVR, Tuscan, driven very, very quickly, just watch that one go around. Here we get a look at this wheel. Michael Caine again to bang straight in the back of that. And I can tell you, those Ferrari bumpers are not cheap. They are not cheap at all, but of course this car, the TVR, has got a lot more downforce, can carry a lot more speed through cops than the Ferrari, which is much more production-based. Uh, and there, look at the damage that he's caused to the front of that car. That won't help the handling of the car at all. Yeah, and Tommy Erdos is after a wounded animal here. He knows he's got the fastest racing car under him. He knows for sure that that TVR has made some kind of contact with another car, and he is going to be after it, and he's hunting it down, literally. Michael Caine has got a tough job to do now to get that car home. We're getting reports back that the car has that damage, the damage that you can see, but Michael Caine is reporting back that the car is drivable. Clearly it is, but it's got to have slowed it down aerodynamically around this circuit. Well, that's going to have a dramatic effect, and there, Tommy Erdos slides right up the inside here going into Abbey. Yes, you can see the bonnet there lifting at speed, so clearly there is some aerodynamic effect. Obviously, the first sort of half lap or so, he'd be a bit wary that he hasn't done any suspension damage, but uh, the way he's fighting back, uh, he's obviously pushing very hard and feels happy uh, with the car. Yeah, Michael Caine pushing very, very hard indeed, keen to make up for the error he made there, and oh, it's just good to see him really still challenging, but the Celine's gone through, and I'll tell you what, if I was Jamie Davis in that Ferrari, he'd be a little bit, be a little bit concerned, because they're catching him up again now, and they're going to have to get through, hopefully, a little bit cleaner this time, but look at that Celine just launch itself off the corner here. Fantastic drive, fantastic team effort by Graham Nash Motorsport. Tommy Erdosini and McKellar, an excellent driver pairing, and this, this Ferrari here is in its own race. It's pushing very, very hard. It doesn't want to give up any move over to have to let the faster cars through. It wants to keep going. Of course, we see the blue flags waving here. And Michael Caine's going to perhaps be a little bit nervous himself coming up on this car again. And as we go through these very, very quick right, left, right here at the Maggots Beckett's Complex, a very, very fast section of the track before we come onto the hangar straight. Uh, Will Hoy, what's the tactic now when you get into the lead of this race? How do you drive when you've had to push so hard now you're in the lead? Is it a, a different approach? Well, he just needs to pull out a lead. It gives him a little bit of comfort, but uh, at the same time, he's got to nurse the car home because you never know when something can go wrong uh, with your own car. And uh, interesting to see the Ferrari, the way it came out of that Beckett's complex. Very quick, nimble, quick little car. The, uh, the first, I think, five or six laps were blinding. The car was fantastic. Um, we're developing the Speed 12 all the time. The TBR crew are doing a fantastic job, but after about sort of seven or eight laps, the rear tires started to lose a bit of grip, and we struggled a little bit, and there's a bit of drama now. I think Michael's just run into one of the GTO Ferraris, so, um, yes, it could all be for nothing, but fingers crossed. Well, oh, oh, well, and this is the 69 Eclipse car again. Some bad luck for them, and the 51 Harman Kardon Tuscan has got a major problem here. Look at that! It literally sheds the tire off the left rear wheel. Going to be very tough to get that back into the pit lane. Well, that's on the left rear, so he's got to lean on that uh, tire through uh, through bridge and then through the complex. So it's not so bad. There's two left-handers in the complex, but it's running on the rim, so that could do a lot of damage to the suspension. Now we have a GTO battle here, which is that that is our GTO leader, and the Porsche, the white Porsche sandwich between the Lotus and that is, is actually a GT car. I promised you that if you see Neil Cunningham in this car, he really does like to chuck the car around. That car again started at the back of the grid. 
And S is launching its way through here. Neil Cunningham really on a mission now. Unlikely to be challenging for victory in this race, but good to see that car out there on the grid and really, really pushing hard. Now, the driver here, Martin Short, that you see in the second car in your picture, the Texaco car, is actually leading in GTO. And this is Mike Jordan. We are on the last lap. Drama aplenty. The speed 12 we knew was suffering a little bit of problem. Look at that gap now. Mike Jordan is pushing so hard. We are on the last lap, the last few corners. He knows that that car is in trouble. Michael Caine's pace has fallen off dramatically in that speed 12. Mike Jordan loves this kind of battle. He's pushing so hard. He knows it's just a couple of corners. Can he not force Michael Caine to make a mistake and just get through? and take the second plate, very important for the driver's championship. That is our leader, he's coming through, barring any mistakes as he goes through Brooklyn's. Will, can Mike Jordan do it? So exciting at the end here. Well, he's got about two chances, turning into Brooklyn's there, the left-hander and into Luffield, this last corner. But I just think he's just gonna run out of time, he needs another lap. Yeah, he sure does. It was a great drive, though, Will. Michael Caine had a very, very difficult car to drive. Tommy Erdos there takes victory for the Graham Nash team. Supreme performance by Graham Nash Motorsport. They had the fastest car on the day, it must be said, but the Lister and the TVR Speed 12 made mistakes today that cost them potential victories. We look at the result. Selene win, TVR Speed 12 are second, and Lister do get that top three place. And GTO victory goes to Martin Short and Simon Pullen. Good the drama, really, at the beginning. Uh, we thought it was all over before we started, so uh, yeah, did fantastic. I mean, he went through the grid and uh, you know, giving the car in good condition as well, so it's not just about getting through the traffic, but giving me some tyres that I can play with. And uh, he did just that, he's, uh, he's a great driver and uh, I'm happy to be, to be sharing with him really. There seemed to be something coming out of the back end of the TVR, whether they had a problem, I don't know. But uh, yeah, they, coming into Abbey, uh, he, he closed the door a little bit, but he, you know, he played fair, he left enough room and uh, you know, here we are, first on the podium. Uh, really happy after Donington, obviously we didn't finish, so it's a great result for us. Well, that confirms the championship position. Warnock and Jordan still lead, but it's getting much, much closer now with the McKellar and Arash just nine points behind. Of course, a great day today for Simon Pullen and Martin Short, who took GTO victory. We've unlocked a key on the car now. The handling was just fantastic. And uh, uh, we just got to keep scoring points, you know, the usual championship thing, and be sensible. I know it sounds dreadfully boring, but it's uh, 16 years since I've won a championship, and uh, I, li I like the taste of it. Well, it may not be much longer before he wins another championship as he moves ahead in the points table. The Jones boys and Lockie and Davis and the Ferrari came together at the start of the race. Didn't do them any favours at all. But the day belongs to Erdos and McKellar. Join us for the next round, Knock Hill in Scotland. And you can get a taste of that at 5 past 7 next Saturday on 4. Up next today, the Cisco City Challenge.